Okay, so let's go and begin the session today. So I welcome you all to the uh, webinar of the decent patterns. So today's webinar topic we are going to discuss on uh, what is the use of decent patterns in our day-to-day -day programming environment and uh, why we need to do decent patterns. So that's what the main intention of the webinar today. So uh, mostly it is uh, related uh, towards the Java technology. So uh, in our day-to-day -day Java activities of the Java project, so what are the fundamental mistakes we do and how it can be done better uh, with the help of the design patterns. So that's the intention of the class today. Okay. So myself, I'm Sagar and uh, I have more than a decade years of experience in big data domain as well as enterprise architect. And I primarily work as an architect for most of the big data solutions and also work uh, towards very closely towards the Java technologies to an extent on PHP and Scala too, fine. And uh, so this this webinar is coming from you to uh, from Edureka and I think most of them will be aware of Edureka. Edureka is one of the uh, global online training providers uh, in the market today. So we have a proper 24 bus on support and also an end-to-end -end guidance uh, towards the course as well as with live classes also offline. So that's what basically Edureka is all about. So is this clear for everybody? So can we go ahead and begin the session? Okay, so as as it's a webinar and we have a lot of people joining, I'll try to answer uh, most of your questions. But logically, if you see, it will be difficult to answer all of your questions, but I will try to answer most of your questions. And also, uh, whoever the question I'm not able to answer, you can always contact the support team on the same. You can you can contact my support team and they will be in a position to answer you on the same. So uh, as the name design patterns uh, comes up, so actually it comes up from a, a famous word called as cough. A cough is nothing called as gang of four. So it's coming from four uh, major people who contributed to a lot to these design patterns. So you can see the name of the persons, basically the Eric Gamma, Richard L. Ralph Jackson and uh, uh, John. Uh, so these are the four major people who contributed uh, towards the software design patterns, which we generally apply in our industry today. Right. So when we discuss on design pattern, the primary intention of uh, coming up uh, with a design pattern is so basically uh, design pattern itself is one of the main uh, concept is how to reuse my code effectively, right? So for an instance, I might have uh, used some project. I might have did a lot of coding to achieve uh, some level of work in my project. I might find a use case exactly same to that. So consider a mobile scenario, okay? And I have written a use case which is solving uh, the same, same related problems of a particular network. Now I'm getting a similar use case for some other network. So the question comes here is, since we already have a code which solves a particular use case, can I reuse that code again? Okay, why I need to rewrite the code again and again, right? So that's where technically if you see design patterns as born. How, how smartly we can write the code and how effectively we can write the code at the same time, how we can reuse the code to a greater extent, which we basically won't do in our day-to-day uh, -day things, right? So the design patterns can be broadly classified into uh, three categories uh, one is called the creational uh, structural behavioral so when we say creational as the name creational suggests so this pattern will be applied uh, during the creation of your objects so whenever you want to deal with your objects or whenever you want to create more and more objects so that's where basically the a creational design pattern comes up in the picture. That is a structural design pattern and the behavioral design pattern are related to how, how we are going to use our objects, etc. all the other things. Okay, so since we have only one hour span of time, so we can't uh, basically look everything into details, but I'm going to take some of the most widely used in the industry today and I'm going to go over one by one of it. Okay, so that's what we are going to see today. So to begin with, so let's go ahead and uh, start up with an adapter pattern. So this is one of the most interesting scenario which you might have faced even in your coding time. So what happens, an, an adapter pattern is like how an adapter works. So for example, if I have purchased 
a laptop uh, from a country like USA, right? Or from a country outside India. And I am traveling to India now. I can't use that uh, corresponding power charger because it's understandable the the power card which I'm using in India is far different from the power card which I'm using in USA. So for that, I can't throw that uh, power card, right? At the same time, I have to use a laptop too. So what is the solution for this kind of scenarios? The solution for this kind of scenarios is to find an adapter, an adapter which can transform from one plug point to another plug point, which you will be normally watching in your day-to-day -day life. So, okay, whenever you buy a product or whenever you bought a product outside uh, your own country, in most of the scenarios, you will be not able to use the power cut. So you will come up with a proper adapter. The same thing, right? The same thing I'm going to apply to the core. How it can be applied smartly to the core and where, which scenario it's going to come. So let's consider a very uh, widely scenario. So for example, there is a client code which I'm showing here. As I said, uh, this particular session is targeted towards uh, Java based code, but design patterns is something is not related only to Java. It can be applied to any language. So people who knows Java can understand this code and people who doesn't know Java is not a problem at all. You can just try to understand the concept of uh, what we are trying to achieve so that you can uh, do the same thing uh, when you are trying to code. Okay, that's the main intention. So uh, when you look at this particular client code, a code which is doing some level of operation, I'm, I'm, let's, let's don't worry about this code. The intention of the code is now the client comes back and says, okay, this particular API called enumeration is a very old one. Can we use any new latest technology? That's what the client comes back and asks. So now the client uh, posts me a very important question. It's a valid question, right? As a client, he comes back and asks me that I don't want to use any more old APIs. Can I go ahead and use new API? Right? That's what the client is asking me. At the same time, this is going to be really challenging because I can't change this code all of a sudden because this code might be used across a lot of applications. Consider a client is a 10 year old client, right? If it's a 15 year old client. So all of a sudden you can't, yes, a new, a new code is always good uh, because uh, you can rewrite everything. But at the same time, the new code is going to cost me a lot of burden because I have most of the time you won't get sufficient amount of time to develop the code. So this this often normally right in most of your project, this uh, this really happens often where you have a code which is already serving the application, but you want to upgrade it to the latest. So what I have to do, we are we are coming in the same scenario like where I bought a laptop or a power card outside my country and I'm trying to use and I require an adapter, right? The same thing without even touching the code, I'm going to come up with, with an adapter where it's just going to replace the enumeration with any one of the latest technology, right? So what I'm basically trying to do, I'm coming with up an adapter, fine. So the latest thing is called iterator, not the enumerator. So basically, whenever the client is asking enumeration dot, for example, now, is trying to use enumeration dot as more elements means it's just a method which says whether the enumeration is having more elements or not but he's not going to get the enumeration he's going to get a method called as next which is part of the iterator see how i am wrapping up that's what isn't pattern is all about you are still using your code called enumeration dot as more elements you are still using your method called as enumeration dot next element but you are at the same time, you are not using that. You are using the very latest technology called as iterator with its methods called as next and as next. So you end up using only animation that next element. But I have a wrapper. That wrapper is taking responsibility of converting this particular enumeration into an iterator, right? So when I want to test this particular adapter, so what I do is that you can see I'm using the same client code. There is absolutely no change in the client code, but the code is passed to an adapter as simple as that and the adapter knows how to change it. So when I'm trying to print, you are using enumeration, but the enumeration is wrapped with an adapter called as iterator, which updates the latest code, right? So when you run this particular application now, without even touching the client code, I'm going to iterate all the elements with the help of iterator and not with enumerator, right? The trick here is what? 
the same client code there is no there is not even a single line of code change in the client code in between the printing statement and the client code there is one person comes up is called as an adapter so adapter says just pass me the existing code and you proceed with the same logic means there is nothing change in your logic you always proceed with the same logic and pass me the existing code so what i am basically going to do is that i am going to print the same thing but the adapter is going to plug in the new code for me right so that is one of the powerful ways of using your adapter okay it's 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 the code might be written in java but you can just imagine this with anything any technology you want either with the c c++ net so the intention is what keep the code as it is keep this code as it is this is a code keep the code as it is keep this code as it is but in between plug an adapter smartly plug an adapter who takes responsibility of converting into a enumerator to an iterator right this one prime example you have taken yes you can take any example but what, I, what we are trying to say is that whenever any any this kind of activity comes up whenever you want to change something or whenever you want to touch the existing code immediately you should think something called as an adapter pattern okay it's it's you can say right you can you can ask me uh, why i have to write an adapter why can't i change the code you can't change the code because there are some applications which might be running for 15 20 years yes a new application is fine but you you can see an application running for 20 30 years but right? you can't change just like that so whenever next time right even after this session whenever you want to change the current application or upgrade to a new application immediately you should strike in your mind with something called as an adapter pattern so please please strike yourself with something called as an adapter pattern right so this is what design pattern tries to suggest you there is nothing wrong in your coding state they are telling the proper way of coding how can you code right so i am not touching the code so that that code is safer all the application is safer if it goes wrong not a problem we can remove the adapter that's all if it goes wrong let it go wrong let it go wrong we can we are going to remove the adapter that's all right so without even changing the current application and i am upgrading to the new application same thing goes with your plug point right i'm not going to change any of the plug points in my home instead i'm going to use an adapter right can i get this video link or video after the completion of the sale yes yes sumit you will get it you will get it fine you have to contact the support sumit fine so uh, next thing as we see an adapter pattern okay you have uh, everybody getting an uh, understanding of what design pattern after watching our first example when proceeding to next example just want a quick confirmation from everybody uh, what we are trying to achieve with the design pattern so this, in the same as it is okay in the same way i am going to next come up with another very interesting pattern called as decorator pattern okay so what this decorator pattern basically going to do right so the decorator pattern is something what it is going to do it's going to provide some extra functionality to the existing application so what we mean by that so let's say uh, let's go ahead and uh, do an example directly. Then only you can understand. Correct. So let's say I have a beverage. The beverage can be made of uh, a dark roast espresso and a cappuccino. Fine. So uh, you can let's consider you can make a dark roast uh, beverage or an espresso or a cappuccino. Now what happens? I am giving you three options. The options are you have to make with mocha milk and soy right so let's take in the notepad so that you can understand it better so i'm going to share your notepad so we have what is the option we are making an espresso okay cappuccino and a dark roast and to prepare all these things there are three options has been given one is called milk Okay, one is called, uh, uh, sorry, just see that. Milk, mocha and soy. So now, if you apply your normal way of coding without decorator pattern, what you will do, you will come up with a milk espresso and a soy espresso and the mocha espresso, right? So you'll come up with a milk espresso, you'll come up with a soy espresso and a mocha espresso. Similarly, you will come up with a cappuccino. For cappuccino also, you will come up with one. For soy also, you will come up with one. For mocha also, you will come up with one. 
the same thing will go for dark process so you you end up creating nine implementations right you you basically end up creating nine implementations which is this is this is this is not going to scale up at all the primary reason is you should why can't i reuse the code again the decorative pattern is going to help you so if you do in a normal way you are literally ending up in creating nine different implementations of your espresso cappuccino and dark roast so instead what the decorative decorative pattern is going to provide a solution is let's open up and i'll explain you the code so that you'll understand by that so what the decorative pattern says yes you are going to prepare a beverage understood and you are going to give a description of that beverage so what it says is that all the cappuccino dark roast and the decorator are ex requested to extend a class called as beverage fine okay so now what happened instead of calling cappuccino separately instead of calling the dark roast separately instead of calling the decorator separately fine so basically what happened is that i am making every everybody into one common something called as beverage so now you are not going to call as cappuccino dark roast instead of calling separately as a cappuccino dark roast everybody become one common person called as beverage so i am not referring each and everybody differently right i am just telling them them as one common thing okay you are a beverage okay that's what we are trying to say so next what's going to happen is that after this how we are going to prepare right so the first the first problem is solved what is the first problem the first problem is basically uh, representing everybody into one common person called as beverage instead of representing um, espresso separately instead of representing in dark roast separately we are making them into one common person called as beverage so now i am talking on only one implementation i am not talking on three implementation so now when i go to a milk what i am trying to do is that i am trying to create milk only with beverage i am not trying to say milk for a cappuccino or a mocha for a cappuccino or a soy for a cappuccino i am telling a milk will be created only for a beverage you say which beverage you want right you can either pass a cappuccino you can either pass a uh, you can either pass a, a soy or you can either pass a mocha it's up to you uh, you can you can say an espresso dark roast or cappuccino it's up to you but for me i am going to create for only one person called as beverage and it is totally acceptable because the cappuccino dark roast and everybody extends beverage so they will act as beverage so the milk is now instead of preparing for three different things is going to prepare for only one particular person called as beverage right so instead of now having different different implementations instead of having a nine implementations it's now switching back into only three implementations okay fine so for a milk only one implementation for a soy only one implementation for a mocha only one implementation right milk says i am going to do only for one implementation called as beverage and you define what are the beverages same thing the soy says same thing the mocha says okay and the trick is where the espresso cappuccino and dark roast all are beverages primarily because they extend the beverage so they become as part of beverage so instead of going for a different different implementations by adding a simple keyword called extends you are coming up from nine implementation to three implementations right and uh, i'm sure most of you aware of what extends is all about either from c++ or or, or java or dot net wherever you start right but how much effectively it has been used in the design pattern right so instead of so that extends is solved from nine implementation to three implementation so that's what basically is all about right so saswath is asking question so decorative pattern is about using a super class instead of child class saswath one thing you have to understand is there are a lot of ways of implementing a decorative pattern in i have taken an example and i am showing you how you have to think about the decorative pattern yes in a way it's yes but it's not always like that you can come up with some other solution also but the point what we are trying to say in the decorator pattern is don't try to have different different implementations try to provide one common implementations with the help of a decorator this is one perfect way of doing it right 
so we are from the design pattern always we have to take only one thing is what is the intention of it right so in the adapter pattern what we what we understood in adapter pattern what we understood whenever we have a code and any person is asking to uh, any requirement comes to change our current code we have to realize whether it's really required to change the current code or we can add an adapter on top of it so that the current code never gets affected it's a very clean implementation same thing whenever whenever you're getting a requirement like implement the same for different different things immediately you should strike out the declarator pattern why i need to do the same implementation for different different things like this is a prime example right so why can't it, why can't we merge everything into one common implementation for multiple things instead of having same for example an automobile right if you if you take an automobile do you for an for an automobile for a honda uh, for an uh, Yamaha, etc. Are you going to have different different implementations, or make them as everything into something called as vehicle, or you are going to have only one implementation with different aspects? That's where basically your declarator pattern comes out. So in the design pattern, basically we have to take the way how we have to implement. Implementation is of your choice, but how it should be implemented, design pattern will decide. So adapter pattern decided that you have to write an adapter class. Declarator pattern deciding that you have to make all of you into one common way. Either in Java, it's simple to use extents, or in your technology, whichever it is there. Okay. That's what basically it's all about. Okay. Just just give me a minute, everybody. Yeah. So please elaborate about real-time implementations of this pattern. Yes, Sumit. As I said, the automobile is one prime imp uh, uh, implementation, Sumit. So when you are when you are an uh, automobile portal, right? Whenever you do a portal kind of scenario, so this is very very valid. So most of the portals, what happens? So uh, for an example, uh, let's let's let me show you something in a portal perspective. So if you look at this particular website, right? And, and website a portal which is basically uh, a, a car based portal. I right? just opened and showed you. I hope you all are able to see, right? So if you if you see this, right? If you see this particular website. There is something comes up and uh, it's showing up different different images for different different cars. Okay, there is absolutely they won't do different implementations. Instead, they are going to provide one common implementation and plug the corresponding car images when it's getting displayed. The same thing goes for the budget. The same thing goes for every single thing. You can find this declarator pattern often where instead of providing different different implementation, right? So whenever you want, whenever you want, so they are not going to write a completely different implementation for Honda and a completely different implementation for an Audi or BMW. Nothing like that, right? So the implementation will say that provide me these details. If you provide me the Audi details. We will show up Audi for you. If you provide me the BMW details, we will show BMW for you. Why you have to write a separate implementation for Audi and a BMW? This is one prime example. Okay, uh, fine, uh, fine, Sumit, you are getting it right. Okay, so uh, let's go to next very interesting design pattern. Okay, so let me take up the next pattern, which is again I am going to take a real time implementation itself now. Uh, instead of this, I am going to take an absolute real-time implementation. Okay, it's something called as change of request pattern. So, a change of request pattern is something. Uh, so, let me open up the slide for you. Okay, so any uh, Saswata is also asking me given understanding of declarator pattern in Java API. So, the input stream and the file file input stream is an example. Saswata, we just added that slide. You can see the same input stream is implemented by different aspects of the stream. Okay, fine, Sasha. Okay, so now the chain of a responsibility pattern is is I am going to take a very real example itself for the chain of responsibility pattern. Right, a chain of responsibility pattern basically is something which is going to give you more than one handle for the request. So what it means? Let's take a very uh, real time use case. For an instance, let's take support. How the support works? A support basically will have L1 support, L2 support, L3 support, L4 support. It goes on, right? It, uh, in a real-time BPO kind of scenario. So in that scenario, we make a call to the L1 support. If L1 support is able to handle those calls, fair enough. If he is not able to handle, it goes to L2 support. If L2 support is able to handle, he will say he is going to rectify the solution or he is going to transfer it to next support. 
so basically a chain of responsibility is like where you are going to use a multiple if else kind of scenario also you can use you are going to try to solve this problem if not to the next level if not to the next level that's what the chain of responsibility says start with one particular action if he is able to solve it solve with him or move on to next particular person, uh, set of people how this can be implemented so a very interesting thing right so in order to understand the chain of responsibility pattern so what we are basically trying to do is that the first thing is we are defining the support i am l1 support the first thing what i am trying to say is that as a l1 support i can solve all these problems the problems is what if if a query comes like where can i download the file yes l1 support can handle it or if a query comes like how much time it will take to land yes he can solve it or if a query comes like uh, uh, what is the what is the fee okay even that also can be solved so in this kind of scenario if a query is which is coming not matching this particular thing so that as you go to l2 we'll see how it is going to come up so l2 says if the queries are not solved by l1 the next case if for example if the user is asking a query call as how to run the project what happens it first goes to l1 it will see whether l1 list is having this particular how to run the project it checks with this checks with this checks with this no l1 is not having it so it goes to l2 then it goes and checks whether l2 can handle it how to run the project is matching here it says yes l2 can handle right the same thing l2 is defining its own queries similarly l3 is coming up and he is, he is defining his own queries same thing for l4 so whenever the user is going to paste a support request basically a support request is nothing a particular query right the query will be matched with all the queries available in our support team and whoever is trying to solve they are going to solve it now the challenge here is how l1 can pass it to l2 now here comes a very very interesting question everybody now a prop a normal implementation will come back and say you will you will directly answer me that what is there just in l1 class art code l2 if l1 is not able to handle art code l2 okay that's what the normal a development programming perspective will happen if anybody if i speak to a normal programmer he'll comes back and say without design pattern what we have to do he will just say okay go go iterate over l1 if l1 is not solving okay give it to l2 so you will say hard code l2 here that's the solution but let's say l2 is on leave so at that point of time it should go to l3 so where i can change that so do you want me to go and change in l1 that's not going to be possible right because l1 is an implementation so at any point of time i should be in a position to define for l1 the next support is either l2 or l3 or l4 it's not always l2 that's where the design pattern comes up right so if it's not you cannot always go back and say the next immediate report of l1 goes to l2 l2 might go on completely and shut down for a process so how i can achieve this so this is challenging right this is really challenging because l1 should be in a position to pass to the next level of people at the same time he should not hard code who is the next person in his class he is not going to hard code so in his class what he is keep on telling he is just telling who is the next support i am going to pass the request that's all he says in his class he is nowhere hard coding he is just telling he is just trying to find whether the queries can be handled or not if the queries can be handled yes he is telling queries can be handled if not queries can be handled all he does only one thing is uh, just passing it to the next support okay so who is this next support how can i define this next support that's where your chain of request comes up what chain of request says is that it may be l1 l2 or l3 or l4 fine so you have to set an handler to this so set an handler l1 dot set handler of l2 so in the execution part go and define who is next not in the implementation part don't write anything inside l1 by telling your support is l2 that's not correct 
always inside L1 come back and say you just blindly pass it to the next support. You should never worry about who is your next support. Your next support can be L2, your next support can be L3, your next support can be L4. You know, you don't worry about it, right? You never, you never take a decision by yourself of who is your next support. Your next support will be decided by the higher authority who is going to execute this. Fine. So who ne you, you never ever decide it. Okay. So that's what the thing. Fine. So that's what the chain of responsibility pattern always says. Okay. So the implementation person, either L1, L2, or L3, or L4, so they never should be in a position to say who is next. Okay. Instead of that, they should just directly pause what is the next request. And who is the actual person has to take a call? The actual person who has to take a call is basically your the person as higher authority, the higher authority who is going to execute. So that particular person is basically deciding here. Okay, L1, your support is L2 and L2, your support is L3. You can, you can modify the whichever the way you want, right? So for now, for example, when we are say how to run the project. So this will say who is actually uh, going to solve this. So, okay, this will be solved by L2, I think. And this will be solved by L1 itself. So when you run this particular project now. You can say L2 support uh, solves that project and same thing goes to the L1 support, right? So that's what basically chain of responsibility pattern is all about. Define your uh, chain of responsibility pattern at the same time to the implementation person. That's how it should be, right? To the L1 team, the L1 team should never take a call of who's the next support. They should only pass the next support to the next uh, person who can handle the request. The support decision should be always taken by your L2 or L3 or L4 by the higher authority, right? So did you all getting an understanding of uh, what is chain of responsibility pattern? Can you get a quick yes no from everybody? Thanks for confirming. Thank you. Okay. So, so that's what I'm doing. Without this design pattern, the only one thing what might have happened is we might have hard coded inside L1 who is the support. We might have hard coded inside L2 who is the support. So with design pattern, what basically happens is that we're just telling them design pattern is just coming up with a very good design of Listen L1, just bypass it to use your next support. The same thing goes to L2, the same thing goes to what? L3. And the person and the person who is going to do this and a person as an higher authority can take a call of who has who should be your next support. That's what your handler does here. Okay. So let's go to one final pattern. You will find a lot of these kind of patterns when you join the course basically, but here, as I said, the time constraint, etc., all the things we basically uh, selected only some of the patterns uh, which are widely used. Okay. So one comes the one final pattern, which we are going to discuss in today's session is something called as a mediator pattern. So most of the applications we need a mediator, a typical use case is for a chat application. If you have 20 users, you can't go and say hello to 20 users. Instead, you will say hello to a group. The group will send hi to all the 20 users. So who's the who's the mediator here? The group is the mediator. And what is the responsibility of the group here? Passing the messages which is coming from one set of person to all the other persons. A very real time use case of where the mediator pattern is going to be used. Okay. I'll uh, So let's, I'm going to show the same implementation of the mediator pattern. So if you look back to the mediator pattern. So what happens is basically we have a chat mediator. Okay, the chat mediator is going to sit up and he is, he is taking all the participants available, right? So, so while executing this particular application, when you execute this particular test, see what happens, you have this many number of participants. So Kelly, Brian, Alex, uh, Romeo and Mark. So instead of Kelly knowing who are the other users, instead of Brian knowing who are the other users, instead of Alex knowing who are the other users, all the users are added to the mediator. So now what happens when the user sends hope you are all doing good, the mediator who are the users registered with him is going to send the message to all the other users. Right? So how smartly mediator is playing. So that's where again design pattern comes up. Without design pattern, what will happen to the user one, you will add all the other users. To the user two, you will add all the other users. With design pattern, what happened? With design pattern, basically what happened here was, 
there was a mediator instead of user one user two knowing who are the other users to the user one i am registering all the other users okay with help of the mediator not directly so here the mediator is the person who takes who says please register all the users to me either 100 or 500 users okay so that's uh, that's something right so in this corresponding scenario once the uh, once the mediator is basically uh, registered with all the users right so in this corresponding scenario what's going to happen is that he's going i i'll i'll come i will answer the pawan what's the difference let let's first execute this find pawan and the pawan let's execute this and i'll come back to the question and also i will i will show you an example of uh, means uh, i also i will also show you an example of uh, in the java which is uh, basically used okay even i will uh, show that particular thing too okay so let's go and uh, execute this particular application so just give me a minute okay so let's sexy go this particular so i'm trying to say hi here so when you say run as java application so basically you can say when user one is trying to say hi it is going to every single other users the same thing when you look back in your java application right i'm just telling in an api perspective how it can be used also we just have in one more example so let's take uh, I'm just having a mediated GUI example just to show you of uh, how this particular uh, this is going to work. So in the Java API, how this mediator pattern works is that so when you execute this particular GUI, so see what happens here. There is a two set of uh, components is playing up in the picture. One is a very big text area here and one is the individual text fields. So now what happens when you say brand flower, the brand flower is something is getting updated here as also it's getting updated in the corresponding uh, text boxes. So it is the mediator takes responsibility of populating in both the places, right? So in most of your form filling kind of environment, the mediator might play a very, very, very good impact. Okay. So there's a question asked by Pavan and uh, uh, Bhavin, right? What's the difference between observer pattern and the mediator pattern? Okay. So the primary difference is an observer pattern defines an one to many dependency between objects. Okay. So that when one object changes the state, all its de dependents are notified and updated automatically. Right. So if one object is changing and all the other dependent objects will be get updated automatically. Okay. Whereas a mediator pattern provides loose coupling. It allows you to take a decision of how the interaction to get vary. Okay. It allows interaction to get vary independently. Find, uh, find Bhavin and Pawan. Is his answer to your question? An observer pattern will automatically update all the other objects where a mediator pattern acts as a loose coupling where you can take a call off. See, for example, in this mediator pattern, if I not added any one of the user, he is not going to get an update, right? So it's very loose coupling. Why is an observer pattern? It's a very tight coupling. All the updates will happen automatically whenever to the main instance changes. Is it fine, Bhavin and Pawan? Sensory question? Is it fine, Bhavin? Okay, so. The primary difference is the mediator pattern uh, provides a loose coupling, whereas the observer pattern provides a very tight coupling. Okay. So these are some of the four major design patterns. So uh, prior to this, uh, I can also show you some other design patterns. Uh, so for example, I can show you a design pattern on basically the factory pattern. So I think most of you might have heard about the factory pattern. A factory pattern is something which is going to deal up with your creational of your objects. Right. So, for example, in this particular scenario, in this particular example, if you look at there is a class called product and there is a mobile product, there is a disk based product. So there are two products, mobile or disk based. So the user as user is not going to uh, entry is not going to be upfront means the user is going to dynamically enter whether it's a mobile or it's a disk. That's what the user is going to do. The user is not going to say upfront. The user is going to say whether I'm going to use a mobile 
product or I am going to use a disk product only on my requirement. I won't say upfront. So in that kind of scenario, how can I create an object? In Java so far, I create an object by telling mobile m equal to new of mobile. Disk D equal to new of disk. But here all of a sudden he is coming back and he is telling that I am going to create a product based on the argument I pass. So in that scenario, what happens? We are just creating a factory object here. So there is a method which returns a type called product. And both the mobile and the disk extends product. So if the user passes mobile, we are returning new of mobile. When the user passes disk, we are returning new of disk. But since both of them are extending the product class, so we are basically returning the type as product only. So by this, what happens? You can pass the argument dynamically and also you can create the object dynamically whenever you want. Right? We are not forcing the user to create upfront. Right? So that's what basically your uh, factory pattern is all about where one can create what type of product you want dynamically. You don't want to say upfront in a scalable, I'm going to create a mobile product or I'm going to create this, but you can pass whenever you want. And the factory pattern is something which is going to return you a common product based on your requirement. If you pass mobile information, you'll get mobile based object. If you pass disk information, you'll get, you'll basically get your disk based product. Okay. Fine. So these are some of the most widely designed patterns which we have uh, uh, taken for today's uh, thing. So coming back to the course, so when you take up this particular course, uh, we will be basically providing an end to an introduction of all these topics like the introduction design patterns, creational, structural, behavioral. We have different, different uh, topics for each and everything and also how concurrency can be achieved and the anti patterns means what are the corresponding anti patterns should be used and, and also interestingly, we'll give a project and the use case on the same. Okay, so likewise, there are a lot of lot of different design patterns are available. Okay, I, I have shown some of the creational patterns. Okay, you can also discuss on the Java interface design patterns too. not only on the Java design patterns. You can also discuss on something called Java interface design patterns. So for example, the MVC design pattern model view controller pattern where uh, which is widely used in the web today, right? And uh, where you one can see that the model and the view will be a completely segregated out there will be no such thing like the model and the view has to combine by itself and start work so that's that's one of the uh, very good usage of the mvc design pattern right a lot of technologies uses mvc design pattern like the struts users the spring users etc all those kind of things and there are a lot of other design patterns involved in your rest services i think most of uh, i didn't rest services something got on a web service kind of thing Right. So design patterns is widely used in most of even any particular application which you do day by day yourself in your activities. Right. Even those are also design patterns. OK, so we will be looking more of this uh, when your course starts. So when your corresponding course starts, we look more and more of this design patterns. In fact, in detail and also we as I discussed, we also have a project which can help you uh, in understand the real time scenario. Right. We will provide your project at the end of the session means at the end of all your corresponding chapters where you get very good knowledge on what has to be done right and basically how we work so we have a live online classes you can join and you have all your recordings in your lms you get a nice 24 bar 7 support and you have a corresponding module wise quiz and also a project work and uh, finally we also provide a very good certificate for you all so, okay so question so one dollar having any questions please uh, Come up with the questions. So, what's the design patterns? Basically, you all getting an understanding. What's the primary intention of design pattern? Why design patterns? Why we need to use design patterns? Okay. So, as I said, uh, technology is not a barrier for design patterns. Means, uh, it's not mandatory. You should do only on Java, right? You can either use in .NET or you can use in C++. It's up to you to whichever technology you want to use. There is no such thing like uh, you have to uh, use one the particular Java here. But we have to take the concept of design patterns. It means where a decorator design pattern should be used, where an adapter should be used. Likewise, we have a lot of, lot of design patterns. So the more you get a very good knowledge on the design patterns, definitely you are going to become a, a very very good uh, program trust me the design patterns will really change the way how your career looks because you are providing a smarter solution okay 
so design pattern is just a methodology to to better design an application also and also for an implementation we actually add two two points only not for the design also for the implementation it it also guides you how we want to implement right it provides you design also the implementation both we have to consider fine mean actually it's not only one thing regarding the course and fee duration yes dharmendra i kindly request you to contact the support on the same uh, the support uh, provide you all the details in fact uh, you will also get a mail very very uh, detailed mail of what is the course fees etc after this uh, particular session but i also request you to contact the support where they will provide you very good uh, understanding of the course duration and what the course does any other question from others how should i decide which pattern is most suitable for the situation so completely depending on the requirement nitin so now you already get a, got an understanding of adapter so whenever you get a requirement like uh, change the existing code you should think of the adapter okay and same thing goes for the decorator right so the more you practice on all the design patterns you will really uh, easily understand which pattern to use at what time fine the thing so that's the primary intention of the course also right right so that's the primary intention of the course also it's going to guide you like which that's why we have a course on this to completely guide you on where you want to use what that's the main thing right can you please inform me what's the main use of abstract factory pattern okay bhavin so here if you see the factory pattern which we have discussed right we had a class called as factory sorry we had, we had a class called as product right so we basically extended all the product and we told the product as defined three things called as name type and description an abstract factory is going to work in the same way the only thing is the class product won't define anything it will be abstract and the mobile and the disk can define whatever they want fine women as simple as that. the mobile and the disk class who is extending the product they will define what they want instead of the product defining what other has to follow that's where abstract factory comes up in the picture okay so any other questions from anybody How we do the project? Do we discuss the design part implementation based on the given scenario? I don't see anyone following it in big projects, but good products used to follow this. A very good product will always follow this step. As simple as that, right? See, design patterns can be put in two ways, sir. Mandra, one is at the design level, one is at the implementation level. Either if you are not using in design or not, but you will be always using at the implementation level. That's for guarantee. right but a very good product will will implement in both cases in design as well as in the implementation fine dharmendra whether we should inner class we, you should definitely use inner class a lot sumit you should definitely use if you see your hadoop and all right the big data environment they will use a lot of inner classes there a lot of usages you will find in inner classes not only in this you will you will in fact find a lot of lot of use in the big data kind of environment particularly any other questions anybody okay so then i think we can uh, go ahead and wind up the session i hope everybody of you got a very good understanding of recent patterns i hope this session provided you nice knowledge on where the recent patterns is to be applied and please contact the support and the same for the course because it is very much important in your career perspective where to use what design pattern as i said in the implementation as well as in the design even though if you are not using in the design but you should be really using in the implementation perspective that much guarantee the course will give you you will you will at least become a very good uh, programmer and developer with the help of this course it will really guide you in the correct direction of what implementation has to be used for which okay and uh, find everybody so thanks for joining the webinar and uh, please contact the support on the same and also please kindly provide your feedback at end of the session thank you everybody thank you very much